Hello everyone, Alzion the Great here. Welcome back to College Football Revamped, and welcome to the first episode of CFB Revamped uh, with head coach Al Zion. As today we're going to get into our first game, first looking through some of the top stories just to see how some of the teams are going to perform, or at least what the game thinks some of the teams are going to perform. But obviously if you had the AP poll, and or the preseason poll in, uh, in 2022, then you know where everyone is, and it's pretty much similar, or it's not similar, it's exactly the same to that. The only thing that's different is the schedule. Obviously, I recreated, or at least got all the four teams that Colorado State's playing, but everyone else has pretty much reset schedules, so we're not, you know, doing that. But Colorado State is projected to finish fourth in the Mountain West Mountain uh, Division, which is, I think, a little bit generous, honestly. In the entire Mountain West, we finish seventh, which is okay. It could be worse. It could be better. Colorado is projected to finish dead last in the Pac-12 South and the Pac-12 as a whole, but I don't necessarily think that uh, points to how strong they are. This team is pretty good, I think, all around. They got good players in the in the on the line with you know Sammy. He's their best player there. On the defensive line, but they also got good secondary players, good running back, good quarterback, decent offensive line. Uh, they're led by Brendan Lewis, who we're going to be seeing for the next couple of years, obviously, if we keep playing in uh, this game, or in uh, Colorado State, I should say, as the receivers are not that strong in terms of depth, but we'll see how well they're used today. And also, here's how I'm going to be controlling the game here. We're going to be going with coach mode. And here we see Colorado State in their home uniform. Colorado in their away. That is the setup for this game, although it's not a true home game. Both teams, obviously Colorado, Lewis and Sam, you're going to have to watch out for them on defense. Sneed should be a big factor for them in the offense. We'll see how good Jackson and Bailey can be. I'm hoping for a big day from Bailey. And Camper, we'll see how much of an impact he will have on this game as once again offense is not what I am used to at least that from a coaching standpoint from a playing standpoint I actually love offense and I do it all the time but I have no idea how this offense is going to operate because I'm not going to be controlling it so with the Rocky Mountain showdown about to start just to go over a brief bit of history Colorado has won the last five Rocky Mountain Showdowns. Uh, the last time they played was 2019, but they're playing here again in 2022. As Colorado picks tails, it is tails. And they will choose to kick, and the Rams will choose to defend their side. And here we go. The opening kickoff is up and away. And the first game of the series is officially on as the knee is taken in the end zone. So Colorado State takes the field. Clay Millen at quarterback David Bailey beside him in the backfield. First play is a handoff to Bailey, and he won't get very far as he only gets one. But the first play, not as successful as we were hoping. Big hit there on David Bailey as well. Brings up second and nine. Now the second running back, Ajon Vivens, comes in. Hoping to use him quite a bit as well this season. That's another handoff once again to the outside. But Vivens actually loses a yard, making it third and ten. Nico Reed on the tackle there for Colorado. And this will bring up a first, the first third down of the day for the freshman quarterback, Clay Millen. As this is his first start in college is against Colorado State. Fakes the handoff and the pass is dropped, unfortunately, and that will be 4th and 10, and that will lead to a punt. So only 55 seconds was that first drive as the punt is up and away. A great one as it's fielded and the returner does cross 50. That's Deion Smith with a 10-yard return. As we'll see the Colorado offense for the first time. 
So they come out in I formation with one tight end and two receivers. It's a quick screenplay, but it does not work that well. It is to RJ Sneed. He does get two yards, but we'll see how effective or how utilized he is this game. Has now ace formation, two tight ends, with motion now bringing one to the bottom of the screen. As it is a screen, and they do get it out to Fontenot as he breaks through one tackle and does manage to pick up the first down and nine yards there. As Fontenot, pretty good back, as here's an option play that does not work at all. Brendan Lewis loses three yards. Mohamed Kamara with the tackle for loss there. And this is the biggest uh, play for Colorado State so far, as it'll be second and 13. As it's second and 13 now with motion, it is a handoff. As there's a broken tackle, there's another one as Jalen Jackson gets his first touch and gets eight yards and gets out of bounds. It'll be third and five for Lewis. We will take the ball, stand in the pocket, throw into the red zone, and caught by Jalen Jackson again as he gets two good plays and gets Colorado into the red zone. Lewis with Fontenot behind him again. Lewis is going to take off and scramble a little bit, but he's sacked, but there's a flag. And that flag is for a face mask, a big play taken away CJ on Yechi it'll be first and goal on the nine for Colorado so a big mistake there even though he got to the quarterback and now it's first and goal Lewis it's an option play we take out the running back but we don't get to Brandon Lewis as he runs in for the first touchdown of the game and I will be simming all PATs and field goals just to make sure that it is legal or like uh, randomized I guess would be the word as the ensuing kickoff is taken for a knee. So Colorado State did not do very good on their first possession as there's an adjustment by Millen as he drops back. It's a quick pass and it's caught and that is our number one receiver Tory Horton. Hopefully he has a big year for Colorado State. As now on the first and ten for our first first down we have a handoff here to Bailey, who gets a little bit of room, three yards there, and that'll bring up second and seven. And on this second and seven, we do see the first dual back formation with Bailey and Vivens, as it'll be a handoff to Bailey in the middle, and he does get quite a, a big hole there to run through, and he gets eight yards on that play, his best rush of the day, as Colorado State is driving. First and ten after the play changes. Millen will take it and it's a pass. And he'll actually pull it and scramble and he gets very close to the first down marker and does indeed get 11 yards. So it'll be a first down for Clay Millen. We'll see how his legs are utilized. We have a, a quarterback who has better legs than the rest on the team and uh, Braden Fowler Nicholas. But he has been redshirted this season as it is first and ten. Once again, dual back formation. This time a handoff to Bailey again but he only gets one after a big hit in the backfield there. Just nobody accounted for that backer as it'll be second and nine. A. John Viven steps in at running back as Millen fakes the handoff, but he's going to get tracked down and sacked, and that is Sammy. As Jalen Sammy gets his first sack on the day, Colorado's best player and one of their leaders on defense, Makes it third and 16. You can see here, just nowhere really to go with the ball. He had a chance maybe on the sideline to the left, but that drive ended up in a punt. And now first and 10 from the 20 for Colorado. As the handoff to Fontenot does not go anywhere. A three-yard loss as Daquan Jackson makes his first impactful play. Our best player on defense, the middle linebacker, as it'll be second and 13. Big opportunity for Colorado State here, as it's another handoff to Fontenot, but this time nobody is able to get to him. The edge was not set, and Fontenot gets all the yardage back and more. 16-yard run, and that is a first down for Colorado, 
as now they got out of the hole and now they're back in control where they want to be. Once again, motion with the tight end as Lewis makes a throw to the sideline and it is caught by Jalen Jackson. Sneed was the focus coming into the game, but it looks like they have a different guy that we need to be worried about in Jalen Jackson. He's done very well so far. Another option play as Lewis pulls it back, but this time he is met after three yards as we do manage to corral him there. It'll be second and seven as the field is spread a little bit more. As Lewis, another screen, does get it off just in time to Fontenot. And we did, in Colorado State, call a blitz on that play and it did not work as uh, Colorado had it predicted perfectly. And Fontenot is becoming the focal point of this offense. Brendan Lewis does not have a incomplete pass. As it'll be first and 10 in Colorado State territory. Lewis hands off. This is a different running back this time. Anthony Hankerson as he gets nine yards. And now on second and one the first quarter beginning to wind down. Lewis with Hankerson in the backfield again fakes it to him. And it's another run by Lewis as he does manage to fight his way inside the 30 after a five yard gain. As Brandon Lewis and, pull, and running the ball has been very effective today for Colorado. Quick pass as this one's dropped and almost intercepted. Brandon Lewis first in completion and, it, and two Colorado State defenders kind of collided. This is only the second third down for Colorado in the games. It's a third and eight. Lewis will pass. Throws it deep towards the end zone and apparently it's caught by Jalen Jackson for a touchdown. He looked out of bounds to me, as you see on this replay, trying to get to the exact point. His toe is out of bounds, and I don't believe that's a touchdown. Coach Zion is going to challenge it, and I honestly don't know how this is going to go. I believe that he clearly is out of bounds. Sure, his foot, you know, the back of his foot hits the ground first, but the entire foot has to be in bounds, and it isn't. The result? They call it a touchdown. What feels like a blown call by the officials is not only going to give Colorado a first down, but seven points. As on the ensuing kickoff, I just cannot imagine how they could really call that a, a touchdown. That's a good return here out to the 26 or 27 is Dante Wright. You can see the play selection, seven runs to three passes, trying to establish the run, but it hasn't really worked. Only 33 yards to this point for Colorado State. As now we got some option, Millen keeps it, does break a couple tackles. He needs to be careful as he does get seven, don't want to fumble the ball. But after the risky keeper, it is second and three. Vivens is the single back and the pistol by Millen. He does get the handoff. He does get some good blocking and does actually manage to get the first down on the four-yard run. As it'll be first and ten. Once again for Colorado State, Vivens stays in the game. And a broken play here. I uh, tried calling an RPU, one of the created plays, uh, that comes with CFP revamped and uh, it did not work there so we lose six yards it'll be second and 16 two backs in once again and it's a fake and a drop off to Vivens who does make a guy miss so he will gain one yard and it looks like might be the last play of the first quarter no Colorado State does snap it Millen gets away from a potential uh, potential sack there but Threw it off his back foot and didn't have anyone in sight. So the end of the first quarter sees Colorado up 14-0 with Colorado State set to punt. After the punt, this is the first official, I guess, play of the second quarter. It is a quick screen out and a broken tackle as they cross the 50 again. Caleb Faria gets his first reception and it is second and inches. Colorado has been very efficient and I think has a lot more plays in Colorado State as this is an inside run, easy call there. But a seven-yard run on second and inches is not what Colorado State was looking for. 
This is getting out of hand a little bit as it's first and ten. Once again, motion. A little adjustment by Colorado State as it's once again a handoff to Fontenot. And he breaks through. Nobody got off their blocks. And he's taken down at the 25. But it was by the face mask clearly as that will be even more yardage added on. Chigozie Anusium is the culprit there. And they'll have first and 10 from the 12 or 13 yard line. As Lewis drops back and throws and good coverage there by Greg Lede preventing that ball from being caught. And it'll be second and 10 offset eye formation with one tight end. Lewis hands off to Fontenot. Gets inside the 10, makes a cut up field, and gets down to the one. First end goal for Colorado. You'd have to imagine they could punch it in very easily, and it looks like it's going to be power versus power here. Small motion. It's actually a pass, but the blitz was too much. Brendan Lewis sacked for a two-yard loss. It's Daquan Jackson again making his presence known as he tries to get this team Hyped up for a goal line stop. A second and goal from the three. Motion with the receiver again. Another pass from Lewis. And he throws it right over the middle to Bradley Russell. The second tight end. As it'll be 21-0 at Colorado. And Colorado State is in desperation mode here. Uh, early in the second. As Millen tries to uh, get through... A hole there from the blitz, but Jalen Stryker, the corner, who came on the blitz, gets his first sack. As you can just see, there was a small hole, but he went way too late. And now it's second and 13. As this ball is, it just plays a fake, and it is caught over the middle by Torrey Horton for just three yards, getting back to the original line of scrimmage. And that brings up a third and 10, something Colorado State has not uh, converted yet as Millen ends in the pocket throws over the middle but short uh, and incomplete only two for six pitiful offense so far and the defense has not been much better as Lewis fakes the handoff but he does get tracked down but still manages to effort his way forward into a five yard run as Colorado has mostly stayed on the ground, but they've been effective in the air when they need to be. Late adjustment from Colorado State as they hand off to Fontenot, who does manage to get seven yards and get back into Colorado State territory. 11 first downs to four at the current moment in the game. As Colorado was just in complete control. And Lewis fakes the handoff again, but good option defense from Colorado State. Leads to a zero-yard gain as he tried to pitch it out to R, uh, R.J. Sneed. Chagosie Anusium with the tackle there. They've tried to get Sneed in the running game, not so much in the passing game, which has been a little confusing so far. But they hand it off to Fontenot. No edge was set once again. Shoved out inside the 30 near the 25 after a 23-yard run. You can see defender just went to the hole and Fontenot just cut it outside for the easy big gain so this will be another first and 10 from the 25 a fake from Lewis as he decides to take off T gets shoved off of one gets the first down inside the 10 lost the football picked up by Colorado State and that is a fumble and the first turnover of the game it does go to the Rams as you can see on this run Nowhere to go with the football, doesn't panic, decides to run, gets shoved off, another missed tackle, but just lost the football as he was falling forward, and Colorado State manages to recover. So can they do anything with this? Millen from the six, with Vivens in the backfield, hands it off, trying to get more room. Vivens pushes forward for six, sorry, for four yards, makes it second and six, with just over five minutes left in the second quarter. Millen fakes the handoff, almost gets sacked again, but does manage to get it out to Dante Wright, who gains four yards, and it'll be third and one for Colorado State. They have not converted a third down today, but they're in I formation, and they will hand it off to David Bailey, their power back, 
No speed, to, but he does eventually get there. Seven yard run and a first down. As Colorado State finally keeps the drive going. No more three and outs. But they still got to get towards the Colorado State side of the field as Millen once again pulls it down. This time decides to slide. Almost a late hit there, but uh, Colorado, Colorado's defenders pulled back. That makes it second and six. This Millen going to pass again. This time he does throw, and it is caught by Torrey Horton, I believe. No, it is Ty McCullough for 15 yards, his first catch on the day. As Colorado State is now driving officially, it will be first and 10 from the 41, a fake handoff. Millen pulls it down again, and this time gets near the 50 as he does slide down. As you can see, the versatility of the starting quarterback here. Second and one, they hand it off to Bailey, who has some indecisiveness. They'll give him a few inches, but it'll be third down. And Colorado State is going to hurry up here. One of the few times you'll see the play call screen, as it'll be third and inches. Looks like the same formation, same play, and Bailey, no indecisiveness this time, as he gets six yards. And it's another first down inside Colorado territory now. It's Colorado State. Ace pistol formation. Millen fakes the handoff and misses a wide open receiver on the slant. That's big as it'll be second and ten. Same formation but no tight ends, just two more receivers. As Millen steps up in the pocket, throws it short, and it is caught uh, just inside the 40 by Ty McCullough, his second catch on this drive. As it'll be third and four from the 38 yard line. Vivens and Bailey in as it's a blitz from Colorado over the middle and it is caught and it's the first catch by the freshman tight end Tanner Arkin. I have high hopes for number 89 on this offense regardless of how we're doing it. If it's running, blocking, if he can catch a ball, I believe in him as it's a screen play here but it does not work. Good effort by Torrey Horton to at least get back to the line of scrimmage but the tunnel screen does not work there. And it'll be second and 10. 130 left in the second quarter as Millen. Quick slant play against the, against the blitz from Colorado, and it does work. It's Tanner Arkin again. Another big catch on the drive. And it'll be first and 10 from the 11 or the 10 and a half yard line. As uh, Millen hands off to A. John Vivens, who gets a good run there of seven yards. Now we're inside the five. Actually, that was Grady Kelly, excuse me. As it'll be third and three. Power versus power. It's a pass, and it's thrown to Torrey Horton, who does manage to make the catch and get a touchdown. 27 seconds left in the first half. As a great drive by Colorado State. Kind of keeps them in the game here. Caden Camper gets his first extra point of the season. We'll see if Colorado tries anything with 22 seconds. They've certainly done well on offense today, and the passing game has been pretty darn good. As it'll be first and 10 from the 36. It's a draw, so probably nothing doing, as Fontenot actually gets nothing, but Colorado calls a timeout, so they're not content. They just wanted to get a little bit closer, but they didn't get anything out of it. And now... Lewis throws across the middle, but it's dropped by his receiver. And now, even if Colorado runs it, Colorado State could call a timeout and get the ball back if they so desire. So it'll be third and ten. Lewis will pass for it. Throws it short, and it's dropped by his receiver again. I think he's had three of his four incompletions be drops. And after the punt, five seconds is left on the clock. So Colorado State does send... Their offense out with Millen, and it is a pass. Millen steps up and heaves it as far as he can. Round the 25, and it is almost caught, but incomplete. So no extra points there. But Colorado State had some momentum heading into the second half. As uh, it'll be 21-7, Colorado leading in the Rocky Mountain Showdown. Colorado is set to receive the second half kickoff, which is, I think, lucky for them considering the momentum that Colorado State had uh, heading into 
the locker room and into the second half as uh, it'll be first and ten from the 25 for Lewis who only had four incompletions ran for quite a bit as he'll hand off to Fontenot who also ran for quite a bit as he does get six more on this possession but Colorado is basically unstoppable in that first half and we'll see how and if they can continue that momentum another handoff to Fontino wrapped up immediately but he still pulls ahead for three yards and it'll be a third and one for Colorado in their first drive in the, in the third quarter almost an offsides call but it's an option play Lewis pulls it back and nobody's there making cuts across the 50 breaks the tackle down near the 40 yard line a 26 yard run by Brendan Lewis this sophomore is dynamic as it's a 13th first down for Colorado first and 10 from the shotgun Lewis hands off to Fontenot again breaks one tackle trucks through another across the 30 for a first down and a 15 yard run the Buffaloes are running wild as you can just see no chance there for that defender as it'll be first and 10 as Lewis once again feeding Fontenot this time he gets stood up after four yards but still a solid gain Fontenot still in second and six Lewis back to pass this time he throws and a broken tackle two broken tackles I guess three at the end there Brady Russell a 21 yard touchdown reception no need to watch a PAT or anything there as we quickly get to Colorado State who needs to answer that touchdown Millen's gonna get sacked on the first play uh, for Colorado State in the second half Jalen Stryker on the corner blitz no help from the running back there from Bailey I believe and that is not good it's only a four yard loss but considering how ineffective the offense has been not good a lot of adjustments being made by Millen on this third and 14 as it's a mixed blitz and uh, Millen did not have a good throw there <laughs> tried to go deep with it did not uh, do so as it'll be first and ten for Colorado once again a handoff to Fontenot as all they really need to do is feed him because we can't stop him and it's burning the clock anyway but on second and seven they do decide to pass and it's caught I believe that's uh, Faria yes it is on the 14 yard reception multiple weapons being used in this game by Colorado and, st and state does not have an answer as it's another handoff to Fontenot but this time he does get wrapped up two yard gain they'll hand it off again edge is not set and almost a broken tackle yeah there is another broken tackle there as Fontenot is pushed out of bounds nine yards 15 for 120 and we're only not even halfway through the third quarter as Colorado State puts more guys on the line but it's a different back on a delayed handoff as uh, Hankerson gets a big gain there making it second and two as Colorado closes in on yet another touchdown as this will be a drop back from Lewis throw over the middle and Caleb Faria gets the nine yard touchdown reception as Colorado has officially put the game on route as it is not going very well for State in the first game with Al Zion after a three and out I believe for Colorado State we're back to Colorado's offense I know we're tired of seeing it but it's another handoff to Fontenot although he's gang tackled after five yards it's still not really working for Colorado State as on second and five good run defense right there as Fontenot loses four and that's the first time we've actually had a big stop from Cameron Carter as it'll be third and nine and one in the backfield is Lewis he throws it over the middle it is caught but it is not gonna be for a first down Jalen Jackson could not get there and it's fourth and two and for the first time ever in the game Colorado is punting As the ball is snapped and booted away from the 45 lands inside the five but goes out the back of the end zone as it'll be a touchback 
And the Colorado State comes out with the dual back offense. Millen's still in at quarterback. Obviously, four freshman quarterbacks on the Colorado State roster as Millen fakes the handoff inside, flips it out to Vivens, who tries to make a guy miss, can't do it, but he does get eight yards, so a good first run there as it will be second and two, still in the split back formation as Millen throws it down the field to Arkin at the 45, who catches it a 22-yard reception, the biggest reception on the day as a perfect throw by Clay Millen as he hits 100 yards through the air. The first downs are kind of similar, although the score does not <laughs> reflect that at all. As it'll be first and 10, some motion as Millen pulls it down, trying to run, but he cannot get through as he does get sacked by Tyus Martin. And I honestly thought he had a receiver on this play. You see sprinting across the middle near the 30-yard line there. Had a chance, but it'll be third and 11. Can Millen make something happen on this play? Blitz from Colorado is trying to roll out, but cannot buy enough time. An eight-yard loss. Jalen Sammy. Gets his second as Colorado forces the punt. With 141 left in the third quarter. Colorado would attempt to run this out, but Lewis is going to pass. He does throw, and another very close catch by Fauria, I believe. As it'll be first and ten, Colorado just wanting to pound their rival into submission. Almost a sack here on this play, but a beautiful throw, but a drop. Once again, four out of the five incompletions have been drops. It hasn't even been Lewis's fault as he hands off to Fontenot. This time, we have the edge set, and we do manage to take him down after only one yard. Almost a broken tackle. It'll be third and nine. Three men down for Colorado State as it'll be a draw conservative call, which we were expecting. As it'll be a zero-yard rush there to Quan Jackson with the big play. So Colorado gets it back, trying to build up some momentum. The split back seems to have worked earlier in the game, so they're sticking to it. Millen throws across the middle, and Torrey Horton does manage to hold on after a big hit there. It'll be second and three, but as you see, just catches and then just squished as it would be. But that was the last play of the third quarter, as we're now in the fourth. It is third and four after a play. Millen making a lot of adjustments as three receivers do the exact same route on the side of the field and it works as he gets it out to Horton and he does manage to get 19 yards and get out of bounds. Literally had two guys just standing over there with nobody around but each other. Decided to throw it to Horton as he got a block there and it'll be first and 10 Colorado from the 30 as it'll be a handoff to Bailey who gets rocked utterly just demolished on this play no chance of running the ball there as uh, Bailey does come out it'll be third and ten with Vivens in the backfield Millen drops back steps up throws deep and intercepted inside the ten that is Nico Reed who gets Colorado's first turnover as he gets his first interception on the season and I didn't actually think this was a bad throw. I think he overthrew the guy underneath. And if he hits him, I mean, that's like inside the 15 free play. So just got to, you know, make that throw. But fake to Fontenot. They throw it short as uh, Faria breaks the tackle and gets seven yards off of that. And we just could not tackle, it seemed, to anyone in this game. As it's second and three, they will hand it off to Fontano, who does manage to get the first down and get six yards. As Colorado looks to put the uh, finishing touches on this game. Once again, another handoff to Fontano as he just barrels forward for seven more. This is only the seventh third down attempt today for Colorado State, and it's third and three. Most of them have been short or at least manageable. And it's a handoff up the middle as Hankerson does not get there. It'll be fourth and one, so another punt from Colorado. As uh, Giles Pooler has now entered the game at quarterback for Colorado State after the interception. His first throw 
is dropped as uh, Fuller is the number two quarterback, obviously. Very similar to Millen. Second and ten for a split back. He fakes inside and he gets hit very hard, losing three. And Giles Pooler is down after the tackle for loss by Quinn Perry. And we hope Pooler isn't hurt significantly. As for this third and 13, Miller, or Millen will have to come back in. With just under six minutes left. Millen throws to the outside. Incomplete good coverage. As that will be a punt uh, for Colorado State. You can see the offense. We've run exactly the same amount of plays, but huge point differential, huge yard differential, and six first downs in favor of Colorado. So just better opportunities, I guess, as Hankerson gets this one on second and seven, but does not get a, a yard to go Zia Anusium. There it'll be third and seven. Lewis setting up a screen, does get it off to Hankerson, but he stopped for a four-yard loss. And uh, Colorado State, their defense is showing up here in the fourth quarter, which is at least something to be proud of as Giles Pooler is back in the game. Uh, the injury was a bruised elbow, so he is back as he is going backwards again. Sacked for seven yards. Terrence Lang gets his first sack on the day. I believe that's three or four now as it'll be second and 17 for Colorado State. Pooler under pressure, throws across the middle. Arkin cannot hold on. And it'll be third and 17 now. And Stacks formation coming out from Colorado State. And Pooler blitzed again and hit very hard. Did not see the pressure, did not get help from his receiver. And Jalen Stryker, the cornerback, gets his third sack on the day. I don't know what the receiver was doing on that play, but he did not block Stryker as it'll be 4th and 25 from the end zone as the punt is away and received. And uh, on that play, a face mask, clear as day, comes through. And with that, I was just, I was done. DeAndre Greeley, uh, with that, I was done. The next play, though, we did get a fumble, uh, and we recovered it, but I decided to keep going because it really didn't matter. Giles Pooler got some stuff, but a sack and completions, and they uh, ran out the clock with Hankerson as it would be. They tried a field goal, but they uh, did not hit it. And Colorado wins the first uh, Rocky Mountain showdown since uh, 2019 with a dominant 35-7 performance over Colorado State. And uh, yeah, all that right there, that's all we did today. I was certainly hoping we could do a little bit more. I thought this game would be a little bit closer than 35-7. But there are some good takeaways from this game, even though it was a blowout. I think the fourth quarter on defense especially was uh, exceptional. The end of the second quarter on offense was exactly what I want to do, you know, control the ball, do everything. But... Uh, also, the reason I put in Pooler was not necessarily because I was like frustrated with Millen after the interception. I actually wanted, I actually had planned, I think uh, sometime in the third quarter, I, I just said, okay, let's put him in at some point in the game just so he can, just to, just to see if he, you know, sparks the offense a little bit. But I think Millen did okay. It's, it could certainly be a lot better. I think I needed to play call better on offense. Uh, as far as defense goes, I think we were fine besides missing tackles. Uh, I mean, it's not a good thing to do, but, you know, we got two turnovers, even though one of them was in kind of garbage time and didn't really matter. But, you know, 10 punts is not ideal at all. But, you know, we could be better on both sides of the ball this game, but I think there's good positive takeaways from this. Brandon Lewis and uh, Alex Fontenot were unstoppable and... I, I think we play called decently on defense. I I definitely sharpened up in the third quarter, you know, just trying to make sure that I knew the situational awareness. And I don't know why Jalen Stryker got three sacks. Like they they called like one they called corner blitzes like three times in the game and all three of them Stryker got sacks. But 
that's what seven or eight there uh that's eight sacks so not uh ideal at all and only five punts in the game uh, it's half as much as we punted so it was definitely something that we needed to to work on just the entire game but I, i'll take responsibility for this i think you know the defense could have tackled better we could have you know forced them into more third downs we were good in the red zone when we got there uh but you know time of possession was good everything else is good i just think we need to play or play call better on offense and play better on and tackle better on defense overall i think there's going to be a lot of improvements for next week i already have a better game plan in mind i feel like i'm going to be a little bit more attentive when i or if, when i have a situation to do but here we see some of the top stories georgia did take down clemson a big match between oklahoma and notre dame in south bend that'll certainly be where college game day is headed as a uh, pit lost they're the number 17 team in the nation they lost to florida state good to see florida getting a win i always love my team getting a win there but they put us in the top stories <laughs> as a striker got the three sacks and i was kind of like laughing sad <laughs> there but here's the top 25 yes i did edit this myself bama is number one not georgia because bama didn't do anything bad and georgia beat a top 14 but i don't alabama didn't do anything bad so they shouldn't lose that spot but yeah uh, Clemson drops to 11. Uh, other than that, everybody just moves up a couple spots. Uh, I'm not, I think Pitt is still ranked. Not entirely sure. Actually, I don't think they are. No, Tennessee is and Purdue is. 25th team is BYU because they did not play. But yeah, next game will be against Middle Tennessee State. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you all next time.